Hi, I'm Mike Ayton from Pro Tools Expert, and welcome to my studio, Microphonics in Twickenham. And we've got the entire PTE London gang here this afternoon. And what we're going to be doing is we've invited Paul from Emerging, and he's going to be showing us the Trinov Demon and explaining to us the difference between that and the Trinov ST2 and what enhancements the Trinov Demon brings to the party. Paul will also be showing us how to set up a Trinov system and the process involved and what the benefits of doing so are. Okay, so uh, we're going to uh, introduce Trinov's uh, latest uh, product, which is the Demon. So the Demon is uh, the next stage on from their ST2 and MC units, which were for room calibration only. Um, what the Demon introduces is the room calibration, but also a uh, full monitor controller. Um, uh, which can be controlled both from just a, an on-screen graphic that runs on your PC or your Mac. Um, there we are um, uh, an Apple um, app that can also uh, show the same graphic. Um, but most importantly, this now connects with a Pro Tools system through Yukon or through MIDI and enables you to replace an Xmon um, with either the, the Icon series or uh, S3, S6 control surfaces. Um, so the, the Demon actually becomes your main monitor controller as well as the room optimization. Um, so the first thing we're going to do, we've set the, the Demon up. Um, we've got a 5.0 monitoring setup here, and we're going to calibrate the room. So we're just going to go through the process of calibrating the room. So we use a, a unique uh, Trinov microphone, known as a 3D mic, which uh, has four Omni capsules. And uh, you'll see in a moment, we're going to go through the process of um, the Trinov generating uh, a noise that sounds like white noise called MLS noise. And the microphone is then receiving, picking up that noise and listening to the direct sound from the speakers and then the first, second reflection and reverberation of the room. So the process, quite simply, once we've connected everything up, is to actually go into calibration mode. So if we look on the, uh, on the screen here, I can select calibrate. Uh, it asks me to turn the microphone on. Okay, so we turn the microphone off. So we now, we have captured that calibration. We now need to uh, compute the, uh, the results of that. So the system will now calculate um, using algorithms to uh, calculate both the, the distance of each speaker, the height of each speaker, um, and then process that to correct uh, amplitude, phase, and delay. So we just let, uh, let the system Tick over for a second, you can see the cogs whirring. It does take a little while to process. Once we've actually processed that, so we've taken an initial um, calibration in the main mix position. We could then do additional measurements either um, along the desk or we can um, go further back into the room. A uh, typical application would be to also take a, a position at the back of the room, typically the client uh, producer sofa or whatever. Um, because obviously as you go further back in the room, you're going to see quite significant increases, particularly on the low end. And it allows you to, uh, to optimize for those positions as well. Um, if you're going to do multiple positions in a, in a larger room, then you would probably save those as different presets and switch between them. Um, often you can widen, it's sometimes it's required to widen the circle, so we could probably take a, a position 10 centimeters either side, maybe 10 centimeters back, which will then make the main monitoring position um, just extends it to optimize. But um, sometimes it's not required. It's often, in a, and particularly in a room of this size, relatively small, um, one position is more than all you need to take, and you, you'd get the effect of it even um, you know, a few feet behind. So it's now calculated that calibration. So we can then look at um, the results. So first of all, it shows me, this is a top view looking down. Um, it's showing me the position of the speakers. The ones with the blue um, edge are the actual speakers. The, these two green ones are just a reference to show you roughly where the ideal speaker position is for, say, your left and right at 30 degrees. So we can see a, a, a visual 
of exactly where the speakers are positioned in relationship to the central microphone position. Then we have the elevation view. So this is us looking forward so we can see uh, the height of the left, center, and right. As you can see here, the center speaker in this room is actually below the TV, very typical in a post environment. Um, so you can actually see that the left and rights are higher than the center. That's something that we can um, uh, actually fix later on with the Trinov. And then you can see that the uh, rear speakers um, demonstrated here are obviously behind us, but they're 100 and nearly 150 degrees in it within the circle. And then we can see the, the numbers that actually summarize the positions of each speaker. We can see the left, right, and center, and the distances. We can mess around with this and move the speakers and, and ideally get them correctly positioned. They're pretty close, but the Trinov will um, accommodate for that anyway. So it shows um, the uh, SPL volume of each of the, of the speakers um, and the delay, the distance between them. So it will then calculate. So you can see here that the rears are uh, seven, seven milliseconds um, delayed compared to the front three, which are five, five and a bit. Um, so it will then apply delay compensation, as you can see here. Uh, so it's delaying the front so that they are uh, correctly timed with the rears. Um, so if we now look at the resultant graph, now the display here can show me three areas. So we've got the before, uh, the after, the correction, and then in this case for the amplitude or frequency, um, showing me the, the filter correction that applies to that. So I'll just take the filter out for the moment and just to make things a little bit easier to see, we'll just look at first of all the left and right. So if we look at the left and right, uh, do it on this display here. So this is showing me plus and minus 10 dB. Um, and we are seeing the green is the left speaker and the blue is the right speaker. We can now see from an amplitude point of view the frequency of the room. Um, so this is this has compared the direct sound. That's the direct uh, source of the two speakers versus the the effect then of the room, both the first and second reflection. So you can see that there are differences between the left and right because of the, the physical dynamics of the room. And we can also see that very typically there are some low-end, uh, quite serious low-end problems. Um, in this case, at about 180 hertz, there's quite a big boost. Then there's a, uh, a large suck out at around 110. Um, and then another lump at uh, around 80 hertz. So if we look at the before and after, you can see the difference. So this is now, the Trinov has now corrected that using IRR and FIR filters and has pretty much made um, the room look very flat um, right up to so basically from about 40 hertz up to 20k. So that's the first element of, of the three elements. The next one, of course, is the phase. So this is also very important because the effect of things in the room, the room itself, will affect the phase, but only at certain frequencies. So again, if we look at the, the top graph, where the blue and green lines are separating, and particularly when you start to get to that low end area between 50 and 100, um, you can see that there, the effect of the, the amplitude of the room is then going to affect the phase, but also you'll see in reflections from the console, the furniture, and so on that will affect the top end. So then the Trinov has applied um, phase and timing corrections, combination of uh, the amplitude EQ and also the delay and so on at each frequency to substantially improve the phase difference between the left and right. If we then introduce the center speaker, again, you can see where the center speaker really starts to have some phase issues compared to the left and right. And then you can see the correction where it's pretty much uh, uh, very close in terms of improving that on the phase side of things. If we then introduce the rear left and right as well, again, we can select just the rear left and right. So again, you can see where, particularly at the back of the room, you're starting to see some uh, very large um, bass boost at around 100 hertz. And again, the before and after, so you can see the correction. So it certainly brought them back in line, you can see some quite significant mid drops as well, which it boosts up. 
So um, now we can uh, put the system into action, put some audio through it, and actually hear the results.